ready. We are recording. Fantastic. Okay, so tonight we're going to talk about voluntary agreements. And you might have heard a little bit about these in the news or in our groups. Um, and um, tonight we're just going to dive into what they are and then nothing extremely technical. Our lawyer couldn't make it, but we can always ask him some stuff too. So first of all, background refresher, we're here because we care about the Delta. And of course, um, you know, the Delta needs us. I'm gonna ask someone to read this for us. If you could just quickly unmute yourself. Let's go with Karen. Karen, if you could read this for everyone. Hey, um, the Delta needs us. The San Francisco Bay Delta, a freshwater body formed where the Sacramento, San Joaquin, and several smaller rivers meet near the city of Stockton is the largest natural est estuary on the West Coast. It covers more than 1,100 square miles. It provides breeding grounds and habitat for a range of animals, including Chinook salmon and the endangered Delta smelt. The Bay Delta's ecosystem has dramatically declined because of excessive water diversions, uh, introduced non-native invasive species and water pollution. Now the Bay Delta's future and function is threatened by a proposal to build a single tunnel that would divert millions of acre feet of fresh water from above the Delta to parts below the estuary. Thank you for reminding us why we're here. And you know what, you're such a good reader. How about how you read this one too for us? Okay, so what is a voluntary agreement? Um, VAs or voluntary agreements are a euphemism for developers and agencies making decisions that exclude input from other affected parties and from doing EIRs. Um, that's a quote from volunteer Les Kishler. It's a great quote. Um, the voluntary agreements are unenforceable agreements among state officials, water suppliers and purveyors, and a few NGOs that will set alternative flow requirements to those set by the 2018 update to the Bay Delta Water Quality Control Plan. This is a policy set by the State Water Board regulating water quality and flow standards for the Bay Delta. It was developed in four phases. Thanks, Karen. Great job. Yeah, uh, Les had emailed that to me today and I thought, wow, that's the perfect summary for exactly what they are. So fantastic. And I think the key word here is that these are alternative flow requirements to what was already set by the Bay Delta Water Quality Control Plan. So this is just someone else's ideas about how things should work. So in other words, the VAs are a parallel process to the Water Quality Control Plan, and they're really aimed at avoiding regulatory action. They're led by a group of interested parties. So that's water agencies, farmers, and some other folks that we'll get into later. Um, and they've been negotiating in confidential meetings, which for years required state agencies, local water districts, and other parties to sign a non-disclosure agreement to participate in the discussions, notwithstanding the requirements of the Public Records Act. So that's kind of not cool. Phase one of the 2018 update to the Bay Delta Water Quality Control Plan was adopted in December 2018, and that set new water quality standards in three tributaries of the San Joaquin River, requiring more water to flow through the South Delta ecosystem and reducing the amount of water that can be diverted and exported, which is good, but unfortunately, the board has put off full implementation of phase one pending a final VA package proposal that sets comparable flow requirements. So if you can't tell by now, VAs are detrimental to Delta health. It has become increasingly evident that the proposed final VA package will be in no way comparable to the phase one standards of the Bay Delta Water Quality Control Plan. Letters and statements from NGO groups participating in the process and preliminary reports from the state 
show that the proposal would actually require less flows than both the phase one requirements and what is currently required by law. And a determination of the VA's enforceability has yet to be made. In sum, the anticipated final VA proposal would greatly benefit water exports and substantially harm the Delta ecosystem and its residents even more than what is currently already going on in the Delta. So what's in the VA? The flows proposed in the VA appear to be dramatically less than the increases in flows required by the State Water Resources Control Board, which I will call the board um, for the rest of this presentation, in its December 2018 update of water quality standards, uh, which is what you're looking at here in the San Joaquin River Basin. The proposed VA flows appear to be only about 31 of 47% of the Delta outflows proposed by the board, the State Water Board in its 2018 framework for completing the update of the Bay Delta Water Quality Control Plan. So that's about 616,000 acre feet average under the VAs compared to the 1.3 to 2 million acre feet proposed. It appears that under this VA proposal, the State Water Project and Central Valley Project would likely increase exports from the Delta on average, as well as in dry and critically dry years. And the problem is likely worse since both DWR and the Bureau of Reclamation's modeling likely significantly underestimates the increases in water exports and reductions in winter and spring outflow. The VA substitute habitat restoration for adequate flows. This is something we hear from the other side all the time. Even though habitat restoration should not depend on the VAs, habitat should be restored regardless of the VAs of biops or the tunnel, and it should not be a bargaining tool, just like the desperately needed improvements to levees in the region. That's another thing we see that's kind of used as a pawn in the game. Some other things in the VA, the state suggests that its most recent proposal would increase Delta out outflow, but in its draft environmental impact report, the Department of Water Resources proposed to roll back environmental protections for salmon and other native species that apply to the operations of the state water project and to reduce Delta outflow. The state water, resource, the state water board has, has said that it's not clear how the proposed project will not further degrade conditions for fish and wildlife. The modeling and analyses indicate that the pattern of fish population decline could continue and increase under the proposed project. And the proposed project likely would result in considerable impacts to long fin smelt, contrary to DWR's conclusion in the CEQA document, because DWR used a method in their draft EIAR that is not an established statistical procedure. The state's own Department of Fish and Wildlife also raised concerns with the draft EIR. Most notably, DWR found in the, uh, sorry, Department of Water Resources found in the draft environmental impact report that reducing Delta outflow would not harm fish and wildlife. And that's a position that is directly contrary to the findings of the California Department of Fish and Wildlife and the State Water Board. And it's seemingly in conflict with the proposal to increase Delta outflow. The, in October 2019, the Federal U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and National Marine Fisheries Service issued, and that's NMFS, issued new biological opinions or BIOPS that govern water movement and exports through the Delta based on life cycles and locations of endangered fish species. These new BIOPS increase water divergence and weaken or eliminate protections for salmon and other endangered species. The biops were the product of doctored science and they really reek of political interference. Prior to the 2016 election, state and federal agencies prepared to strengthen the previous biops released in 2008 and 9 and require more protections to prevent extinction. And in January 2017, the NMFS proposed actions to increase protections. But upon installation of former Westlands Water District lobbyist, David Bernhardt, who champions diversions and exports, but fortunately now he's replaced by Deb Holland, thank goodness, as Secretary of the Department of Interior at that time, the federal agencies then reversed their course, reassigned the scientists working on the biops to a different division, and then directed the new scientists 
to author biops that will decrease flows in the delta and maximize water exports for agricultural irrigation. On the heels of this action, the California Department of Water Resources then released their water portfolio, which includes new rules for operations of the state water project in the Delta that were really similar to the federal biops. Specifically, these rules propose increasing freshwater exports, reducing flows through the estuary, and weakening protections for salmon and other imperiled fish. This is not happening in a vacuum. The VAs combined with the biops and the tunnel would all come together to make much more water from the Delta region disappear, even amid drought and climate change. And that's why we're very grateful for everyone who's sending postcards and making calls on the recall and all the other important elections this week. That's a very specific example of what could happen. So what does the water portfolio say about the voluntary agreements? Well, the portfolio repeatedly advocates for current and future voluntary agreements as a mechanism to establish flow and habitat requirements for California ecosystems. The draft portfolio deems the VA a current water priority. Unfortunately, the state backing the VA process has only caused delayed implementation of phase one standards and development of phase two standards, both of which are crucial in protecting the Bay Delta estuary. Our response, Sierra Club California's response to the water portfolio regarding the VAs is that we told the state that the water portfolio should not promote voluntary agreements, plain and simple. VAs are not effective measures to develop and or implement water quality or flow standards or habitat requirements. To date, only legal and regulatory action under long time state and federal environmental and conservation laws have actually provided enforceable standards and protected California's fish and wildlife, public health, or other public trust resources. Sierra Club recommended the water portfolio should have encouraged strong enforcement and implementation of these laws. The VAs are not actually necessary thanks to current laws that we already have. So for years, the State Water Resources Control Board has led a comprehensive public transparent process to review and update water quality standards for the Bay Delta. As part of that process, the board has evaluated a range of alternatives and the scientific basis for these alternatives has undergone several rounds of independent scientific peer review, which means review by independent scientific experts. The Bay Delta Water Quality Control Plan set flow standards that were already consistent with the Clean Water, the Federal Clean Water Act and the State Porter Cologne Act and the Endangered Species Acts. The state's water portfolio decries current environmental and conservation laws protecting single species, and it endorses untrue talking points to bolster these VAs. Agribusiness and water agency interests have been working for decades to obscure the intent of the single species protection laws to weaken them. Protection of single species is not contradictory to the intent of these laws. The population size of a single keystone species, so a species on which other species in an ecosystem largely depend, that often indicates the health of a whole entire system. So it's okay to have laws that are intending to protect a single species because they, they do impact the rest of the species around them. It is clear that VAs are not a necessity for innovative, sustainable water management, VAs result in less protective proposals that can delay implementation of legal, more protective regulations. So who's involved in the VAs? I think this little image kind of sums it up, but Central Valley farmers, state water contractors, especially Westlands Water District and Metropolitan Water District have for decades pressed for increasingly more water to be diverted from the Delta and sent south. This coalition is heavily involved in three ongoing issues that critically threaten the Delta ecosystem. The VAs as an alternative to the Bay Delta Water Quality Control Plan, federal junk science and state capitulation, which is a, a word I learned this week, and that means kind of giving up and submitting. So the state giving up and submitting via the Department of Interior's biops, which again, were written under Trump's administration. And then of course, the proposed Delta Tunnel Project. The VAs are written by the Department of Water Resources, and that department is led by Director Carla Nemeth and Governor Newsom. California Natural Resources Agency Director Wade Crofa is also a supporter of the VAs. 
They are opposed by nearly every environmental organization, Sierra Club, NRDC, Environmental Defense Fund, Baykeeper, and a whole bunch of others. The State Water Resources Control Board and the California De Department of Fish and Wildlife have found the VAs to be flawed. SFPUC, so that's the San Francisco uh, Public Utilities Commission and East Bay MUD or Municipal Utilities District have opted out of the VAs. So they're going in that column. So what's happening now? Why are we talking about this now? Because it does sound a lot of this happened in 2018, 2019, so why now? So negotiations have stalled for some time due to five missed deadlines by the state and then the presidential elections and perhaps the next president's influence on the biops. Um, they did wanna wait for the election last year to happen. And that would had the, the conversations pushed up until April, but then now for whatever reason, I mean, possibly it could be the recall, but no one has really said anything out loud. It's been postponed. These conversations have been postponed to November, uh, November, 2021, allegedly. In 2020, the state presented the framework of a voluntary agreement to the state water board, and then they did it again, another update just this last month in August to state water contractors. And also in August, Met, or Metropolitan Water District, which we call Met, gave a presentation on the VAs, but any real updates were given in closed session. NRDC and Sierra Club opposed the closed session and the Metropolitan Chief Operations Officer Devin Upadahi and the General Manager Adela Haja Khalil both said that they agreed with the need for transparency, which is why they would present half of that presentation in open session. And then the rest they did in close. Several members of the board uh, representing Los Angeles pushed for public updates, but the closest thing to useful information that we could get out of them is that the flow amounts that they're going to push for would be close to the incidental take permits. And that's really all they would say. So the rest of that was behind closed doors. Last week, the state water contractors publicly pushed, and here's a, here's a meeting where they did that. It's a little screenshot for you. They were publicly pushing for negotiations to start again, and they really want to take action. That's their kind of buzzword of the day. It seems that they're going to be pushing the message that environmentalists are making negotiations impossible and that our NGOs are really too difficult, but it's because the voluntary agreements are non sequitur. They're going to destroy the Delta and it's unclear how they would be regulated and enforced and the necessary regulations already exist in the Bay Delta Water Quality Control Plan. So that's probably why they're not really hearing much from NGOs or getting the support that they desire from NGOs. Uh, Wade Crowfoot invited several NGOs, farmers and state water contractors to a meeting on the VAs that really seemed like it was for show. It was basically to further give the impression that NGOs are the ones who aren't willing to negotiate, who aren't willing to do anything to move it forward. Met's new GM, Adele Haja Khalil, has pushed for more transparency on the VAs and to give a seat at the table to NGOs or to the public, to anyone. But he did say openly last week in this meeting that he supports the Delta Tunnel. So it's likely that he would push for more exports and reduce Delta outflow in the VAs. It's kind of rumored that he's being pushed to support the VAs in exchange for funding for local resource projects. That's not fair, but um, we're gonna be talking to him this week and try to get to the bottom of what's going on. Sierra Club California and allies are involved in ongoing litigation regarding the VAs. Um, I don't know too much about what's going on there, but if you have specifically uh, specific questions, I can reach out to the legal team if you want to know anything specific. So what can we do now? For years, we've always advocated for California to develop and implement a diverse water portfolio that includes firm commitments of water for the environment and promotes regional resilience. We believe California can meet its water needs and provide the flows necessary to restore the Bay Delta by pursuing a myriad of projects that combine increased agricultural and urban conservation, sustainable groundwater storage and management, and increased water reuse and recycling. Oh, and still more to capture, of course. We need to continue pushing this message. 
And it's likely that we will have to pursue public comments to water agencies and send letters to the states or some other kind of action sometime soon. Um, not really sure when, but for now, let's continue to stay involved in other anti-tunnel activities and then look out for a call to action on the VAs when the time has come. So at this point, are there any questions and then any other experts who want to chime in? I'm looking through the chats. Also, I'm pretty sure that uh, if anyone chats something here, I think it shows up in the recording. So if you want to chat me privately, be aware that I think it shows up in the recording. You're right, Gary. A lot of people who think they're experts, they're not. And experts can kind of be influenced. I mean, scientists still have opinions sometimes. Scientists still try to kind of, you know, steer us in a direction. Desalinization, um, what did you want to know about desalinization, David? Oh, uh, thanks, Katie. Um, <laughs> There was an article by a fellow who said how Israel, and it's sort of like California, you know, dry country, um, at least more like Southern California, uh, has a number of ways they get their water without, you know, taking it up from the north. And desalinization is one of the things that they do. I think Orange County has some desalinization. Am I correct on that? They do in San Diego. So Sierra Club, we are fine with brackish water desalination. Um, and that could actually be helpful in the fight against the sea level rise and encroaching seawater. Um, but for ocean desalination, that's a very last case resort when there's no other water option for the area. Um, it, it's pretty environmentally destructive. You, you should look into the Poseidon plant Talk to Charming Evelyn and um, a whole bunch of folks. The, a lot of the Angeles chapter folks are fighting that Poseidon plant right now. Met is also involved in that. Um, desalinization. There are some plants out there that are taking the salt and selling it to sea salt companies and things like that. That is That can be helpful, but one of the problems is that they dump that salt right into the area right around it and that just kills everything in its path. So that's one of the problems. There's a lot of problems with desalinization. Um, so it, it's like there, there are ways that it can be done effectively, but for the most part, not so much. And we're not really there yet, but I'll connect you with folks who can tell you more about Poseidon and what's going on with desal. Good question though. And then Nancy. You're muted. I was going to talk about the same thing because our last time we were together, they were talking about rising sea levels backing up into the water. So if there were a way to stop that, you know, I think it could be important to desalinization is what I was thinking, but I have read about it and I do understand it uses a lot of energy. It uses a lot of energy. Um, I mean, in the Delta, I'm not an expert. I think that that could be a place if there's sea level water intruding. The bigger solution would be stop messing with the fresh water so that we've got the fresh water flows pushing out the salt. So then we don't have to build all these other things. Then let nature do it itself. We stop taking that fresh water away then uh, that solves the problem all on its own. Right, but we are doing that, so. Right. It seems, it seems like it's gonna happen. Like a problem we create for ourselves that then we have to fix for ourselves. Yeah, it could, it could end up going that way someday. Thank you. Oh, thank you. 
So I think for the experts, the um, the only update then was really that things are the talks are kind of um, starting up again and something's coming, something's in the pipeline. Uh, we know that November there will definitely be a conversation, but they're already having these little talks behind closed doors now. So we're getting ready for it. The tough part is, you know, the recall is coming up. So we probably want to wait to do something until after that to not make things so difficult for Newsom um, because he is kind of the target in this, unfortunately. So it's a difficult position to be in. Um, any other questions or any of these other uh, geniuses want to pipe in? Any comments? Political allies. I mean, we've got the, we, uh, David says that there seems to be no political allies. There are the water agencies that chose not to be a part of this. That's something that's helpful. Uh, we've got the fact that the Water Control Board had some comments saying this isn't a good idea and that the Fish and Wildlife said this isn't a good idea. That's something, um, but yeah, we could use some more muscle, absolutely. Do we have any legislative allies at all or awareness with, with anyone? I don't think so. I will, I can look into that for you, but this isn't really, it's not, it's again, like the tunnel, it's not something that's on their level. It's between the water agencies to work out. You know, I feel, I feel like a lot of this is by design and on purpose, of course. Yeah. So um, in that case, keep doing what you're doing, attending these Wednesday meetings, learning what you can about the tunnel, participating. Um, last week would have been an action committee meeting, um, but we had the DWR webinars. There's one more webinar from DWR on the tunnel and the it's gearing up for the um, environmental impact report vote that will happen next year. That's our next big vote. So these webinars are about the topics that they're including in their environmental impact report, and they're just trying to tell us a bit about them now. There's one left, the environmental justice one, that's September 16th at 6 p.m. Um, we'll send you an email, but participate in that if you can. We'll give you talking points, but I also find it's helpful to kind of see whatever they're saying in the moment and do your best to dismantle it or ask questions that kind of poke a hole in their logic because that's easy to do. <laughs> and um, then we will update you when it's time to fight on these VAs and um, we'll let you know how the conversation goes with Adele. Hopefully it'll be good. I mean, the fact that he does care about transparency and letting NGOs be a part of this conversation, that's something It's getting there and uh, just shows we have more work to do. So do that. Thanks for participating tonight, folks. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.